What's going on everyone? It's Sean with The Social Media Pros, a pressure washing marketing agency. And today I wanna talk about why your pressure washing website matters more than you might think that it does. Uh, we're gonna start dissecting some of the things that you should have in your website, some things that maybe you shouldn't have in your website, and really the overall importance of your pressure washing website. If you're new to the channel, my name's Sean and I put out pressure washing marketing and sales related content every single day here on YouTube. I'd really appreciate it if you considered hitting the subscribe button as it really helps the YouTube algorithm. So jumping kind of into what we're going to be talking about, um, I know a lot of you guys already understand that it's important to have a website, but one of the things that you may not know is there's some certain things that your website should have in order to convert your traffic at a much better level. Um, and so basically what I mean by this is, you know, if 100 people hit your particular pressure washing website, if they're actually intending on looking for the services that you provide, only a very small percentage of those people, maybe five to 6% of those people will actually convert into a lead, whether it's a phone call or they submit their information on your website. And in this video, I'm gonna go over some of the things that you can put on your website that will raise that percentage as high as possible by having certain call to actions in the right places. Um, now this content or this video today is really for anyone uh, that has a pressure washing business Business, um, no matter if you've developed your own website on something like Wix, or maybe you've worked with a, a, a company that's developed your website, and maybe they maintain it, and you just need to send them an email and say, hey, can we add a couple of things to it? Um, I wanted to make this kind of flexible content, but I think it's important information to get out, because I also know a lot of people that are paying for SEO, they're paying for Google Ads, they're doing all of these things to drive traffic to their website, and maybe they're thinking to themselves, why is none of this traffic converting, or why is it converting at such a low level? So I wanted to talk about that. So I'm going to switch over to um, my screen here so you guys can see what I'm looking at. We'll kind of dive into it. If you guys have any um, questions about the content in this video, feel free to drop a comment below this video. I respond to every single um, comment. So let's just jump right into it. So jumping right into it, a quick thing I wanted to talk about that most of you are probably already aware of, and honestly, a lot of you watching this probably already have a website, but I want to briefly touch on the importance of at least having a website, even if it's not in your budget to pay a company to do it and you have to put something up. The thing is, is you can't really run Google ads um, if you don't have a website, which in my, in my personal opinion is one of the best paid advertising things you can do. But the other thing is, is that once you get your Google business profile up and running and you start getting reviews, one of the ranking factors that will really help you rank up and also convert is by having a uh, an actual website, right? So as you can see, I've typed in pressure washing near me. The first three companies that showed up, I can click on their website, I can learn more information. So as a homeowner, if I'm looking for a pressure washing company and I find this one, oh, they have 65 reviews, let me go look at their website. If I come down here to this company here, they don't have a website and they might have a website, it just might not be attached to their Google business profile. And so it's really important because now, you know, as a homeowner, I, I may see this and say, man, they've got 16 five-star reviews, you know, I want to take a look at their website. Now, obviously, some of them are going to, you know, maybe they jot down the phone number and call it, but a lot of people want to click on the website and learn a little bit more about the brand. So those are those are two pretty important reasons why you want one, um, a, a website that is. The other thing is, is you know, when, when somebody types in the Google search bar, if they type in pressure washing near me or pressure washing company, there's, there's really only three places you can show up. You can show up in the Google Ads, which obviously, like I said, you have to have a website to do and you have, obviously have to pay to show up in those areas. Your website can also show up here in the map pack, which I actually just made a video yesterday talking about how to increase your rank in the map pack. Um, if you want to learn about the number one way to increase your rank in the map pack, I'll link the video in the description. You guys can go check out that video. But the other place that you can show up and rank in, and if you don't have a website you're not going to show up in, is the search engine results, which is where... When, when a company says they're doing SEO or if you're looking into doing, doing your own SEO, this is what you're trying to impact, generally speaking. You're trying to increase your website's rank so that you show up here. Now, obviously, in my area, the number one company showing up is Angie, Thumbtack, Yelp, all of those other third-party companies, right? Now, what I will tell you briefly, not to dive into this subject too much, Google does not necessarily want to rank these companies up there. The only reason that they're ranking them is because the, the companies, at least in my area, are not doing an extensive job with SEO, and so they can't really outrank them. And it's not that difficult to outrank these companies because, again, Google knows what they are, um, and they really do want to show your business, but you've got to give them good enough content and rankable content in order to show up. 
But enough about this stuff. I really want to jump into some of the tangible do's and don'ts, um, and, and I want you guys to be able to walk away from this video with a little bit of knowledge on, on if, like I said, if you're designing your own website, some things you might want to include or some things that you you know may want to change about your existing website. So I have a couple of websites pulled up uh, in my browser here. Um, uh, two of these are local brands, and then one is, is a website that we've just recently developed that I want to go over. So when I typed in pressure washing uh, near me, this is, a, this is a company here that showed up. Um, and, I, and I'm just going to be really um, honest about what I see and kind of, you know, how it feels to me if I were a customer. So the, the one thing I will say that they've done really good at is they have a call to action button over here that, that kind of stands out. It says contact us. And they also have a free estimates button here, right? So as as a homeowner, if I landed here and their branding was on point and I felt like I wanted to convert here, it's very easy to do so. Now, I probably would add a phone number somewhere, a clickable phone number or maybe a pop-up or something like that uh, very briefly for another call to action. Um, but as I kind of scan through this website, this is pretty much it. Um, so I can see that it's a Squarespace website, which generally means that um, this company probably designed their own website, and there's nothing wrong with that, guys. I totally understand why a lot of you guys might want to design your own websites. Um, it saves you a lot of money. Obviously, there are pros and cons to design your own website, but what I will say is it's not very... Um, it's not very aware or apparent as to what they do. Um, I see that they do pressure washing. It looks like they also do auto detailing. Um, and then obviously there's not a ton of content here. One of the things that I will, I, I want to make a note of here um, is that if you have a pressure washing website, you're thinking about building one, a really important thing that you should have for both conversion and for SEO is having individual service pages. And the reason that that helps is because as a homeowner, if I want roof washing or if I want concrete cleaning, I want to be able to land on a page that tells me a little bit more about it. Maybe it has some work that you've done, whatever the case may be. But the more important thing, in my opinion, is the rankability of it. So if you have a page that's you know concrete cleaning, right? On that concrete cleaning page, you can have that concrete cleaning and all of those related keywords layered throughout that web page that'll help you rank. So you can put in things like concrete cleaning, concrete cleaning companies, concrete cleaning companies near me. So you can layer in all of that. So when you don't have those service pages, you know, at the end of the day, one of the biggest ranking factors for SEO is, you know, the amount of content on your website. And when somebody types in a keyword such as concrete cleaning, how many times does that appear on your website? If it only appears there one time versus your competitor, it appears 50 times, they're likely going to outrank you. So that's a big miss here that I would see is that there's not individual ranking or individual service pages. Um, but for being a self-made website, it's, I'd say it's pretty decent. Um, it definitely has a lot of stuff that it could, you know, um, change. I do like that it has um, this map here um, that kind of shows their location, which is really interesting. This is a huge miss. So I, and so this is the first time I'm seeing this website. So there's no contact form here. So it's very unlikely that anybody's going to copy this email and then write out an email. Maybe it happens. I just don't see it happening with all the experience that I have. It could be a little bit better if this was a clickable, um, and I'll show you guys this here in a minute. You can actually make email links clickable so that it opens up your email application. You can send an email. The same thing's true with the phone number. Generally, on this contact page, you really want to have a form where they can put in their name, their phone number, their address, some general information. And it's important because all that information, you can link it to your CRM, right? So that you can see all that information and track that customer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but really, some people don't want to pick up the phone. Like, you know, we live in an age where some people just kind of want to do these online estimates. So being able to submit that information is super important. So I would be really curious to see the bounce rate of this specific website. Again, for being a self-made website, at least having a website is better than nothing. But I definitely wanted to point some of these things out to you. So I want to move on to this other website here. Um, this looks like a Google website, if I had to assume, like a website you can make with Google. Yeah, so it's powered by Google. Um, some important things, um, I, there's there's no branding or logo, um, but what's really awesome is that they have a get a quote button, they have a call now button, they have get directions button. I don't know how the get, direct, get directions, let's just click on it, let's see what happens. Um, this would be if it wanted me to take me to their business, which most of you probably don't want to do. I think by default, when you build a Google website, that's going to show up. Uh, the call button, I'm assuming, works. If I hit get quote, there we go. So that's actually really good. 
So kind of like what we were talking about on the last website, you want some place where, you know, people can submit their information and it comes to you like via email and then you can respond in the appropriate way. Um, so that's, both of these are really good that these are here. I also like that the get quote button is here. It also pulls that up. That's really awesome. Um, I wish they had their actual logo and branding here and maybe some more colors and some things that kind of popped and stood out because um, that's obviously going to help you pull that in. Now, one of the other things... Um, I wanted to talk about with you guys is why your website also plays a very critical role in your ability to be able to charge more money. So in the pressure washing industry, most of us already understand that, you know, house washing and roof washing are pretty expensive services that most homeowners don't understand are an expensive service. And we always have to play that game, especially newer businesses where we have to try to figure out how to convey that information to the homeowner so that they, you know, when you tell them it's going to be $300 for a house wash, they don't say, I know a guy down the street that'll do it for a hundred, right? We say it's soft washing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, your website can command those higher prices before you ever pick up the phone to follow up with a lead or before they ever call you. So what I mean by that is if somebody types in pressure washing company near me and they land on a self-built website that's you know kind of plain, kind of just laid out, you can tell that they probably built it themselves versus a professionally built website, um, you're going to be able to command a higher price way before then, right? Because the branding, I'll go ahead and show you this website we're gonna get into. This is a website that we recently made um, and you know, obviously the difference here is that the you're portraying your brand to be of a higher caliber. And so when a homeowner lands on a website like this, they already kind of have an expectation as to the kind of company that you are and that you're not the $99 guy, generally speaking, right? So that's another big role that your website plays um, and the importance of having it, right? So when you're thinking about maybe having a company do your website or um, whatever the case may be, you have to take that into consideration that is also, if it's done properly, you're you're, you're ideally going to get a lot less pushback from a lot of customers. But let's continue on diving through some of this stuff. Um, like I said, I really like these call to action buttons. Um, it does look like they, okay, so they have it linked so that anytime they post on their Google business profile, it just puts it in a feed here on their Google page. That's okay. Um, testimonials is just a link to the Google review page, which is actually a really important thing, which I think this website here has, or it should have. Let's see. Hopefully it does, right? Let's go back to the homepage. Um, yeah, okay, we do. So that's an important thing for us. Whenever we develop websites, we always be, we're always make sure that we include um, the Google, a link to the Google business reviews um, because there's some science um, that shows that linking your Google business profile with your website and putting that code inside your website actually helps your ranking. So we do that all the time. So it's really good that they have that here on this website. Um, they do have a gallery, which is really great. Um, because you know, some, some homeowners, they want to see some before and afters. They want to see the, the kind of work that you're putting out. Um, I just saw this painting. So it looks like they do both painting and power washing. I guess I didn't see that before. Um, map pack is ranked. So yeah, I mean, so obviously there are some pros and cons. There's some good things here. There's some things that could obviously be improved on. And I'm sure the same is true with your website. Um, and then we'll be, we'll briefly go through this website and some things that are important that we include when we build websites. And that obviously, like I said, it, that you guys should include in your websites if you can. Um, Obviously, like I've been harping, you know, having these call to action buttons that actually do stuff is very important. Now, I will show you if we hit book now, this should take us to a contact page. This particular client wanted a very, very simple contact page, um, which is totally fine. You don't need anything extravagant. Like I said, the idea here is, is that you want a place where homeowners can put in their information. You capture that and then obviously you can put it in your CRM and follow up and the um you know, as soon as possible, ideally. Um, now, one of the things that I want to point out here is you're going to see a lot of call to action buttons layered throughout this entire website where it's all going to direct back to the contact page, right? So you see book services here, you see book services here, and you're going to see that throughout the entire website. And the reason that there's, that this is important is because as a homeowner is scrolling through your website, you know, they might start reading these reviews and think, oh my gosh, this is a good company. I'm going to reach out and how convenient there's a button here that's going to send me right to where I need to go. And the same thing is true on all of those pages, right? Or at least it should be. Um, like I said earlier and earlier on in the video, the importance of having individual service pages is for several reasons. One, you obviously want a page that is dedicated to a specific service so that homeowners can actually learn more about the service if they don't already know about it. And then the second thing is, is obviously having this individual page, you have a lot of specific content throughout this web page that is going to help you rank up inside the search engines. Um, and again, guys, so as I'm going through this, you know, there's lots of call to action buttons and things of that sort. Um, and honestly, for the most 
most part, that's pretty much it. You know, like I said, I wanted to look at some some other websites that maybe had some areas of opportunity, some things that you guys might see in your websites. But the, really the big thing is is just making sure that your your website, it, it, it has consistent branding with, with your logo and your colors. Um, you want call to action buttons in all the right places. You want them to be able to click and call or click and submit their um, information on your website. And you should, you should layer these call to action buttons, whether it's a book services button or a call button, no matter what that call to action button is, you want to have that throughout your website because it's really going to help your conversion ranking when people start landing on your website. So um, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Like I said earlier, if you guys have any questions about this kind of content, feel free to drop a comment in this video and I and I will be sure to respond to all of your comments. Um, and, and, and again, if you, if you aren't already subscribed, be sure to subscribe because I put out this kind of content all the time. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day.